Can remembering lab values be assisted by donuts, candles, and swans? As a matter of fact, yes. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, starting with sodium. This is Dr. Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com. Hit that thumbs up, get subscribed if you're interested in being able to memorize all medical terminology much faster using your imagination and cool and fun little symbols that make everything more magnetic, stickier, so that you spend less time learning and you're able to remember more. So let's look at sodium, and sodium has a lab value of 135 to 145 in its normal levels. And so one thing that we can do is use a technique called the memory palace if we want, or just in the void of our mind, have these images floating around, although I would recommend a memory palace, which you can learn all about by following one of the links down below. But this idea here is to have actual image of sodium linked to something that's gonna help you remember at least the first number in the value very, very easily. So, you know, I know General Zod from Superman. Sounds kinda of like sodium Zod, and you could just play a joke in your mind, sodium, sodium. And then one kind of looks like a candle, three kind of looks like a mustache, and five kind of looks like a seahorse. So you can use that technique in combination, perhaps like right here on a wall in your memory palace, or even on a vial, you could have a little set of vials for your lab values and think about how you're gonna place these images together to make them more memorable. That way, you have a mental reference point. You can think back to where in space this crazy set of mnemonics was taking place, which allows you to get it into long-term memory faster because you have a point of reference to revisit. So one thing to do here is just think, okay, so what is happening with this sodium? Maybe you don't know General Zod, you would use something else that's very, very personal to you that sort of reminds you of salt. Maybe you had a situation where someone, you know, sneezed and the salt shaker <laughs> blew over and, you know, spilled everywhere or something like that, someone was reaching over. Those kinds of personal memories, they follow what is called in memory science, the rule of active recall. If you personalize things, you're gonna remember them better. So that's why I share with you my personal mnemonics on this channel and General Zod is very useful for me. And then I just need to add on something to help remember the numbers. And one system is candle for one, two would be a swan, etc. So let's just briefly go through some of the images that I use, a number shape system. So zero is a donut, one is a candle, two is a swan, three can be a mustache tipped on its side, or handcuffs. This image here I'm sharing with you, this is a preview from a book that I've written for kids, teaching them the number shape system. That's gonna be coming out soon. Make sure you're sub subscribed if you want more information about when that's coming up. Four could be a sailboat, for example. You can see that sail has a sort of four shape. Five, as we've discovered with our sodium levels, 135 to 145 is a seahorse. Six can be a fishing hook. Seven, a boomerang. You could use maybe a battering if you're a Batman fan. Eight is a snowman. Nine is a golf club. So when we put that all together, right, we can easily go through all the lab values and start to have images for each and every one and just link them to the names of the lab and the first number. And then, you know, you can think about how you're going to add more images for the second number, or you can just generally think, oh, plus 10 for sodium lab values, for example. With that in mind, let's go on and check out potassium. So potassium, well, what are we going to do? Now we have a decimal here, right? Well, one simple thing to start with is just the core number and an image that's going to help you remember potassium. So if we were in a memory palace, we would move from this area on the bookshelf in my memory palace over here. So sodium is going to be here, 135 to 145. Uh, potassium will be over here on the second station. And then three is like a mustache, as we discussed. So we can have a banana with a mustache. And the mustache could be made out of another banana. And bananas have those little dots on either end. So now we have the decimal point. Right? And then you could think about how you get a seahorse involved, which would give you the 3.5. But you know, generally when you have a decimal, you're gonna have a 0.5 in the lab values. And you know, then you have a seahorse for the, for the five. Or you might just remember naturally that that five is there, but now you have a hook. And it doesn't have to be a banana with a mustache. As we saw on this image, we could have easily a banana with handcuffs, which you know, in your imagination may look more like a three, or you may have other things that come to mind that look like a three. 
the, the trick is to try to personalize it in whichever way it makes sense. So I would again think of Chiquita Bananas, which I loved a, as a kid, that sort of brand. And that brings in a personalized part of memory, which again, our memory science, the best memory science we have, shows that acts of personalization make things stickier, more memorable, or as I like to call them, more magnetic. All right, so let's look at bun, blood, urea, nitrogen. Now, here again, we have an opportunity to personalize things. I think of hamburger buns, and it was one of my favorite things to be eating hamburger buns. And, you know, we used to have barbecue in the backyard or hot dog buns, etc. And I just remember that taste very, very much. And so that helps just remember the actual acronym that's often used for blood urea nitrogen. Now, in terms of the numbers, we again have five for seahorse. But what about this 20? Okay, so this may be a little bit overwhelming if you're just learning memory techniques, but there's actually a second number technique, and it's called a 00 to 99 PAO, which stands for person, action, object. I'm not going to get into it in depth now, but let's just say when there's two digit numbers involved, then you can have another number system that's very, very quick. If you would like to learn it, I'll have a link in the description below it for an instruction on PAO system, which you can create probably in two or three days. It will be fantastic for your learning career whenever numbers are involved. And there's no problem using two systems. I combine two systems all the time to help remember things. But that's what I would essentially do to remember this range. A seahorse with a nose. Now the nose, personalized, I would use Michelangelo's David. And that nose would be maybe crashing down on one of these little vials. Okay. Now with this example, let's have a preemptive strike on an issue that you may encounter. And it's a legit one, but it's not really the problem that some people make it out to be. But I, I think it's important to address because sometimes people find that they have a lot of these images going on and it creates confusion. And you know what? In the beginning, when you're learning to use them, that might happen. But by using them, by making sure you personalize everything each and every step of the way, you're going to be able to reduce and then ultimately remove those issues. So what am I talking about? Well, creatinine, right? For me, what's highly personal, I grew up in church. The creation was a big topic, Adam and Eve in the garden. So immediately I think about God creating Adam. And then when he creates Eve, he pulls out a rib, right? Well, that's an interesting story. But what if he pulled out a fishing hook instead? Because a fishing hook can help us remember the number six. But creatinine has that nine sound in it. So what are we going to do to differentiate these things? Well, one thing to do is have a memory palace technique. Make sure you really understand what that is. Happy to go in great depth about that as I do at magneticmerrymethod.com. Now, the reality is, is that these things do not blur with each other when they're separated out in a memory palace. So if we have the term create a nine, and maybe we have that golf club upside down to help us remember nine, then we're going to have that here on a station. And then we'll have the creation and the six being pulled out as a rib to give us this range. Now, when we think about, okay, but it's decimal six to 1.2, We've got two decimals now, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a puzzle to solve. What are two things that a male like Adam has that a female like Eve does not that could help you remember those two decimal points in 0 0.6 to 1.2? A lot of fun to solve that and to use puzzles like that because that's another part of active recall. When you don't give yourself the answer, then you're going to cause yourself to solve this puzzle, which is going to form memories quickly. You're going to say, okay, so what was he talking about? Why, why was that there? And then boom, uh, if you use my images, if you use your own images, as long as you can remember those associations, even if you can't remember quite what you were thinking, as long as you can remember that association, by puzzling it through, you're going to form the memory faster. Even if you have to look at the answer to solve the riddle for yourself, that process is itself going to form your memories faster. Now, the next example I've got for you is glucose. Glucose is in the 70 to 100 range. So glue sounds like glue. And, you know, I might not have some super personal memory for glue. You might. But I think of Glenn Close. Glenn Close was in Fatal Attraction. If you haven't seen that movie, it will make Glenn Close memorable to you for sure. And you can just imagine her in that movie doing something with glue. And then if you have a 00 to 99 PAO, your image for 70 may come very, very quickly. My image for 70 is Cassie, but 
and Cassie is a person that I know, very personal, but uh, I could use a boomerang for 70 with a donut. So seven plus zero, seven as a boomerang, kind of looks like a boomerang, number seven and zero definitely looks like a donut. And that donut could be covered with glue, for example, to help remember glucose. For calcium, well, it's got 8.5. So eight kind of looks like a snowman and snowmen often have stones in their mouths, which gives you that decimal. And then you just have the snowman drinking milk. And so now you, a stone falls in the mouth to remember that there's a decimal point there. And you could think about what you're gonna do for 10. You could have a candle and a donut uh, involved in the image, or you could just basically probably remember that second part. But it, often when you can just get the first part of a range, you're gonna naturally remember the next part of the range. So you, you have to, figure that out for yourself, but that often happens. Now let's look at chloride. So this is again, this example of personalization. You could think of someone you may know who's named Chloe. I think of Chloe Savigny. You could think of, you know, chlorine in a swimming pool. Maybe you remember something about that in your own personal life. But the idea is, well, how are you going to remember the beginning of the lab value? For me, 95 is pale. And uh, I often think of, Pile of Peleus' son Achilles, sing, O muse, the vengeance deep and deadly, whence to Greece unnumbered ills arose. That's the opening of the Iliad by Homer, one of the translations anyway. So of Peleus' son happens to be a pail in that image. That's how I memorized that. Uh, I thought of Brad Pitt kicking a pail because he plays Achilles in a movie uh, called Troy, I believe. And you know, th these kinds of things just really build, they compound, and it can also be 95. But again, if I didn't have a 00 to 99 PAO system, I would look at nine, which would be a golf club, and then there would be a seahorse and have them interacting. And then the 105, you know, generally you may notice a pattern that a lot of these ranges are up in twos or twenties, right? So you don't necessarily need a mnemonic for that. What about bicarbonate? Well, there's a president who has bi in his name, so why not use that? Soda. Uh, is often <laughs> carbonated, right? And then for me, I, for 23 to 29, I would use my 00 to 99 PAO. There's a reason why that two is an N and three is an M, which makes NAM as in Vietnam veteran. So Rambo is a Vietnam veteran. And then Napier is the name of Jack Nicholson in Batman. Jack Napier, N and P, N is a two, nine is a P. But again, these could be the images like a swan and a golf club or a swan and a mustache to help you remember that range. Now, I want to share with you the secondary memory system that I was talking about, the 00 to 99 PAO with some examples from lab values. But before we continue, if you're enjoying yourself, help this channel out by hitting that thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below. This is, you know, a project that I'm very, very passionate about, as you can see. And I know that this alternative to mnemonics is maybe something different than you've seen before when it comes to medical mnemonics. But I want to grow a thriving community that knows that you need to personalize mnemonics in order to make them stickier and more magnetic. So we appreciate you being part of this. And if you follow one of the links down to my main site, you'll find that there's a training on mastering medical mnemonics at large. You can also watch it on the YouTube channel here. It's the first video. And every once in a while, I have a little contest for one of my books, which is how to learn and memorize medical terminology. And if you just want a little bit of an introduction to that book, there is a ultimate guide to medical mnemonics that you can find on my site and would just love for you to be part of this community. Now, in terms of the secondary system, you know, if we think about aspartate transferase, I think it's called if memory serves here, uh, we can just memorize that particular word, that term by using an asp, for example. And I would think very personally, what do I know about asps? And I think of aspen, <laughs> for skiing, but also I think in Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, the snake uh, is often called asp that uh, Cleopatra ultimately allowed or forced to bite her. So that can help with that. And now we can think about that snake with a golf club on a sailboat for nine. But I keep talking about this mnemonic system for double digits, the 00 to 99 PAO. So how do we come up with this? Well, let me just briefly go over it with you. It's based on the major system. Zero is linked to a soft C and S or a Z. One is to a 
D or T, two is to an N, and I've been showing you how this works. So, you know, we had with bicarbonate, uh, the, the, the range was 23 to 29. Let's see if my memory is correct about that. Yeah. And I said that there was Vietnam soldier and Jack Napier. So if you look at this diagram here, N is 2 and 9 is P. And that's where we're getting that Napier. N is 2. 3 is M, so I have NOM and I have Napier, so that reminds me that we're looking at 23 to 29 as the normal lab value range for bicarbonate, right? So it's just really cool how that works. And you just go through all your lists and you can type them out or type out partially those things in a spreadsheet, or you can use it, use your hand using your hand is is by one of the greatest memory experts that we have is is called the ultimate encryption device and it's really really fun to do so but i like to keep spreadsheets as well and it really really helps and you can do this for all of the panels you can do it for arterial blood gas and on and on whatever you have to do that has a range you can use these number systems so I highly encourage you to follow through with this. Again, there'll be a link with a full training of it, but I wanted to make sure that you knew that. Again, there's also a broad, comprehensive video training on mastering medical terms for you. And just as a quick review in reverse, bicarbonate, we can think about presidents that have that name. Maybe there's other things that you can think of. Biplanes, for example, if you have any experience in riding with them. I don't know if you know a Chloe personally or a, a, another actress named Chloe or what else you might do for that. But think about how you can personalize it at each and every step. You can think about eight being like a snowman. Maybe you prefer sunglasses. So you might think of, oh, what is it? Corey Hart, I wear my sunglasses at night and sunglasses kind of look like an eight. Then we have glucose. And my particular idea is to think of Glenn Close in her role in Fatal Attraction, but doing something with glue and then adding these numbers. And here our review with Create Nine, we're thinking about the creation of Adam and Eve in the garden, the number six being a fishing hook and so on. And he's pulling that out instead of a rib. For bun, we can use literally a bun. I personalized it as I suggested, thinking about barbecues in the backyard, you know, that were so important to me and using these images for the numbers, the banana for potassium, beautiful image, but again, personalizing it, thinking of bananas I enjoyed as a kid. And here we go with our first thing, sodium. And even though sodium is not that hard to memorize, I take a moment to push it just a little bit to a specific reference to General Zod. And then because General Zod is involved there, it's much easier to animate in the mind having a mustache and uh, a candle and a seahorse all interacting for that 135 to 145. All right, so there's that. And just to briefly review again, for these number images that I use, you could come up with your own and indeed you'll want to personalize them. A donut. When I have a donut, I often think of Homer Simpson, a candle. You know, I think of a birthday candle from a particular birthday party, a swan. There's some swans that are in a nearby uh, little park around here. And three as the mustache or handcuffs, four as the sailboat, five again as a seahorse. It came up a lot today. Six as the fishing hook, seven as a boomerang, eight as a snowman, and then nine as a golf club usually upside down to give it that nine image. So you're using your imagination, you're having fun, and the lab values, they'll be very, very quick and easy to do, whether it's the comprehensive metabolic panel or the other ones that you are gonna be responsible for. So I hope you enjoyed this training. Get subscribed if you aren't already, and until we speak again, keep yourself magnetic.